This is Real Estate Today, presented by Seattle Mortgage Company on the all-new 97.3 Cairo FM Weekends. Well, hello and welcome, everybody, wherever you may be. This is Tom Kelly, and the show is Real Estate Today, right here on 97.3 Cairo FM. Every Sunday morning at 9, we take your questions, comments, and concerns about housing, home loans, tax, everything under your roof. In fact, if you borrow against your roof, this is the place to call. Today, tough loans. Do you have a home loan that no lender wants to touch? Is there a foreclosure on your record, but you still want to buy a home down the road? Our mortgage expert, Mark Palmer, is here today from Seattle Mortgage, and we'll be talking about some tough loans. And if you've got a tough loan on the books that you're trying to get rid of, if you've got a foreclosure but you really would like to buy a house in today's market, this is a great day to call. 1-888-973-5476. That's 1-888-973-KIRO. Or go to our website. Many of our listeners do that to ask, to ask their questions nowadays. MyNorthwest.com, and then click on the icon that says Connect With Show, and we can take your question online right now. The topic, tough loans. Do you have one in your past? Do you have one in your present? What are you going to do to solve it? Today's guest, Mark Palmer. And I'll tell you, Mark, there's a lot of people out there in the same boat. They shouldn't feel bad. They do have uh, loss of jobs. They do have foreclosures. But in, in many instances, it's not their fault. It's not. And, you know, Tom, you can take a look around at, at the sales right now. 30% of everything that we do has some type of a short sale, foreclosure, something along those lines already built into it. So you're right. Nobody's alone on this right now. What happens, Mark? I know that you, you probably get this a lot. People have foreclosures. They lose their homes for a variety of reasons. It could be loss of job. It could yeah. be divorce. Yeah. It could be because they got in over their heads and they, they were kind of betting on the come. Yep. If somebody does have a foreclosure on their record and they want to buy a house down the road, yep. What do you tell them to do? You know, what I like to see is is somebody have a plan. And, and, and so often, like you said, especially in the frenzy of the buying market, people that were, you know, great people that held the plans, sort of let their plans disappear and bought a house that was just too much. And, and we all know where that went. But if you've got that plan that says, you know, this is what I'm going to do. This is where my bills are. This is what I'm making, um, how I'm putting money back in the bank. You're, you're doing something that's good personally, but you're also doing something that underwriters and lenders and investors all want to see. You're back on track to you know, having some reserves so that if there is a next time, you're going to have a much better exit strategy or no exit. You'll be able to work your way through it. That, that's really it. Track record is huge, whether yeah. it be rental payments, mortgage payments. As long as you're consistent and mm -hmm. don't miss anything, it's yeah. going to start building credibility and credit. Explain yeah. that to our listeners. You know, the, the, the part that comes in is that um, when you have a foreclosure, I mean, it, it's a life-changing event, end of subject. And the, the part that often carries through is that there's sort of this um, unworthy, unworthy, I'll never be able to do it again. Um, I say, go ahead and put your shoes back on again, tie your laces, and start with the simple things. Um, if you have to get a, a small visa card and set a few dollars in there for the bank to trust you again, go ahead and do that. Um, when it comes time to buy the car, uh, don't overbuy. Buy a car that is going to be within your, your payment affordability range and stay right with it. You don't have to stop life just because a foreclosure or a short sale came along in, in your path. Just, just start one step at a time. As a lender, you look at the larger bills. You look at the payments for rentals, the yeah. payments on mortgages, much yeah. more so than credit cards. Yeah. If a person is consistent with his or her rental payment, and they keep it up for a year or two, yeah. then they're back on track to buy a home when yeah. a few years ago, the foreclosure was a seven-year blemish. Yep. That yep. no longer is the case. No, a couple of years. In fact, you know, I'm going to just segue right back here. Uh, what, we, what we see so often that's, that's a mistake that people make is that they'll have several charge card debts and a house payment, and they won't make the house payment but make all the charge card debts. And right away, when you come back and want to rebuild the, the opportunity to buy a house, 
we're looking at this going, well, you paid your MasterCard or you, you paid your car, you paid your Nordstrom, uh, but you didn't pay the mortgage. So it's backwards. And, and that's a, a, the first, I guess, psychology of underwriting we have to look at is, is that you want to show when you're buying a house that you're going to make that house payment. So your rent then becomes your, your next object that we're going to look at. So make that rent payment every month right on the dot. And then you're looking at, instead of that seven-year time frame, a couple of years. And it, it's going to be a couple of years, but you probably are going to want that couple of years to get everything back in order anyway. So that's, that's your plan right there. You know, unfortunately, people feel guilty and they mm -hmm. feel like they're not worthy yep. to get another house when in many instances, it wasn't their problem in the first place. It nope. was their problem, but it wasn't their fault in the first place. Right. And they, they get back into a rental. They mm -hmm. make timely payments. But because they know they've got this foreclosure that they don't do the research to find out how quickly they can get back into a home. Right. You probably feel this or hear about this guilt factor all the time. All the time. And, and in fact, you, having been in this, this industry, I mean, I'm coming up on 30 years, believe it or not, time flies. But I've had people call me, especially in 09 when things were really caving in hard and people were losing their jobs. They'd burned through one, two, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 worth of their 401k. And there's just this sentiment of that was the end. It's not the case. I mean, good people, really good people that are solid and stable, both found themselves out of out of work, uh, whether we're talking husband and wife or just a, a household with multiple buyers that were involved or multiple income sources into it. Um, they they all ran out of money at this at the same time, but they had savings and they still ran out of money. And it's not like they didn't make make those efforts to have them come together. The big piece I tell anybody there is take a look at where rates are right now. Almost assuredly, the house that you're renting right at this very moment, you could pay less for if you owned it because we've got these rates that are down in the low threes again. That's, that's the impetus I would love to pass on to everybody is you're paying more in rent than buying the house that you're renting right at this very moment. If you are renting and wondering if you could buy, give us a holler, 1-888-973-5476. That's one 888-973-KIRO. We've got toll-free line open for you right now. The website, mynorthwest.com. Click on the icon that says Connect With Show, and we can answer your question online right now. I encourage you to go to mynorthwest.com every day during the week. We've got a daily real estate news feed there, all sorts of surveys, commentaries, stories on housing. Check it out every day, mynorthwest.com. Scroll on down to real estate. We're going to take a break and come back and talk about co-signers. What kind of effect would they have if you're trying to buy a home? And obviously, we've got room for you right here on Real Estate Today. You're listening to Real Estate Today, presented by Seattle Mortgage Company on the all-new 97.3 Cairo FM Weekends. Welcome back to Real Estate Today, your headquarters for home and loan questions every week. My name is Tom Kelly. I write about homes and loans, and a lot of that information you can find on the website, mynorthwest.com. Scroll on down to real estate. Check it out. We've got all sorts of home and loan questions on there. And talking about loans, Mr. Bernanke wants to keep them down. He sure does, doesn't but, he? But, you know, what he votes on, Mark, and it would be best to a lender explain this to our listeners, is that most of the time, they're talking about short-term rates, and, and mortgage interest rates are actually a long-term vehicle. They really are. And, and, and you know, it's funny. You, you and I were talking off air just a little bit about things like uh, portfolio loans and, and how they equate to, to all this. And, you know, Mr. Bernanke is charged with how to get the economy going again. And, right. and, and one of the pieces he's got is, is keeping the cost of money down. Um, what you look at that's, that's also in here, though, is, is that the, the vehicles that we have right now, we're in this very unusual position where, on one hand, you have investors that are not just really heartily scooping up these low interest rate loans because they're going to have them for the next 15, 20, 30 years, depending on the note rate. Um, so that's where Bernanke comes in. It's like, okay, the federal government's going to start buying these up. And again, kind of a simplistic answer, but it's a very real equation that we're dealing with. But what it does give us is this year, you're going to see rates stay down. Next year, the first two quarters, you're going to see rates stay down. And that's regardless of who gets elected. That's, that's a good point that we've got out there. 
but don't count on it. I mean, things change. Anything can change. Internationally, and, we don't uh, know. The wars, right. yeah. These, these wars just make a mess out of things that people are trying to plan. And you know, you go back and look at the, the situation with the Americans being killed a couple of weeks ago. Look what rates did. They popped up a quarter of a percent in two days, just bang, instantly. And yeah, it did come back down, but boy, it, it doesn't always work like that. Sometimes they're just going to go up and they're going to stay up. You know, we, we talk about this from time to time. In fact, I remember when I was getting a fixed rate loan for anything under 12%, right. 12%. Yeah. And I didn't think we would ever get under four for long-term fixed-rate mortgages. Right. So, you know, the bird in the hand, let's don't get too spoiled here, people. If you are out there renting and you want to buy a home or you think you want to buy a home, do the research to see what it would take to buy one. And, Mark, why don't we give the best phone number for you during the week and also the website so people can t- contact you because – if, if they take the time to do the research, they probably figure out it might be less expensive to buy. It really is. And, and so the, the first part is the number, 206-281-1500. Again, that's 206-281-1500. And you know, really encourage people, don't think that you have to be right now ready to do business. It's just like the show, talk. We're going to talk. We're going to walk through. And you might be just pleasantly surprised, or you might be where you think you are, and we put a plan together and just actually articulate it and get it into paper. I'm happy to do it. Um, if you prefer, you're welcome to email me. My email address, very simple. It's M Palmer. So M like Mark, Palmer like Arnold. So even if you're not a golfer, it's still a good name. At seattlemortgage.com. Or our website, of course, is www.seattlemortgage.com. So any of those ways, and we're happy to just talk. A lot of people think, if they have a problem with their credit score, mm-hmm. if they have major blemishes that they're either trying to uh, resolve or not really worrying about, that you know, there's a sugar daddy in the background that will co-sign for this loan that will make everything mm-hmm. better. Yeah. A lot of times when it comes to home mortgages, Mark, a co-signer doesn't float all boats. Explain no. that to our listeners. No, hey, boy, perfect. And this is the um, the one drawback that we we've had, sadly, with what's happened with the mortgage market is um, you you go beforehand, and the cosigner could solve a lot of problems. And and so often it would be mom and dad cosigning for kids getting started. Right. Um, it was a very very good thing. What's happened now is everybody's gotten gun shy. Um, so cosigners have certain possibilities to help out, um, but never credit. They can only help with the deficit in income. And Fannie Mae, in fact, has even gone away from that. Uh, Fannie Mae will take co-borrowers, which means two people that are occupying the same home, but they won't take mom and dad's income and apply it to kids' income for the house that the kids are trying to buy. Um, that's, that's a sad piece because that's something that a lot of American families got started with, mom and dad or brother and sister, whatever the case might happen to be, helping them get that first house. So let's talk a little bit about that. If mom and dad... Uh, can can give you money for the down payment, yeah, but it doesn't help you qualify. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. Uh, mom and dad can give you the the down payment. That's great, um, but mom and dad's income, especially on Fannie Mae. Now again, we've got FHA and VA and some other things like that where certain rules will come into play. Uh, but for just a moment, we're going to talk about Fannie Mae, which is at the, at, at this time in America the loan that's most being used. They're not taking a non-occupant co-borrower for income. That that borrower's got to be able to qualify on their own. Um, it's just a change of the times. If a if a person has a lousy credit score, yeah, and mom and dad is still willing to help them out, yeah, or or a family member, maybe yeah. a granddad or something. Grandparents are playing a bigger role they in are. society in general. Yeah, can they purchase the property? And then rent back to the kids, and so the kids can establish credit. Yeah, and it's it's a again we talked about a plan early on. There's a great plan. So what happens there is is that let's say mom and dad go out buy the home for the kids, yep. and the kids occupy that house. They are going to be making a rental payment in essence to mom and dad, but they need to make that rental payment very very precisely, just as if they owned it. That house needs to stay in good repair and needs to be ready to go, so that as they get one or two or three or four years, whatever whatever their plan is in the family and whatever it is that, that, that's going to um, go into the past that's going to put them into a position to be able to buy again, that they've got this wonderful track record 
and they've taken possession of their home and ultimately are going to buy out mom or dad or whoever uh, took that on for them. But it's, it's a great plan. And, and what it does, too, is that with these rates so incredibly low, even what we call an investor or a non-owner occupied loan on a 30-year fix, you're still under four. You're running 3.6, 3.8, just depending on the week. Uh, that, how much better can it get for a little tiny bump in rate to get your own home again and, and get started? Mark, you're a lender. Yeah. If I buy a home for my child and rent it, f- and, and they rent it from me, aren't you a little suspicious when it comes to payments and, and how all that works? No, no. In fact, um, here's a, here's a great example of one that we see. Uh, in fact, we've just passed the wave of this. Is college? We see so many houses and condominiums and so on purchased by parents for kids because of the cost of a dorm. Right. And this way, the family's building assets. Um, the kids may actually take over the condominium or whatever it is when they graduate. This is this is truly a traditional process. You know, that takes a mature adult. I write about that all the time, and I get small communities <laughs> saying, we've already got a fraternity row. We don't need another row of right. kids <laughs> as landlords. So uh, don't promote that as much. I was say, sorry. <laughs> we're going to take a break for Val Stouffer in the news, and then we're going to come back with Mark Palmer and talk more about tough loans. If you've got a tough loan, you're trying to get out of it, let us know your problem. Give us a holler, 1-888-973-5476. That's 1-888-973-KIRO. Or go to our website, MyNorthwest.com, and click on the icon that says Connect With Show, and we can take your question online right now. This is Real Estate Today on 97.3 Cairo FM. We'll be right back. You're listening to Real Estate Today, presented by Seattle Mortgage Company on the all-new 97.3 Cairo FM Weekends. This is Real Estate Today, your headquarters for home and loan questions every week. My name's Tom Kelly. Today's guest from Seattle Mortgage, Mark Palmer. We're talking about tough loans, and if you've got a loan that you're trying to resolve, trying to solve, get out of, refinance, Give Mark a holler during the week. He can be reached at mpalmer at seattlemortgage.com. That's his email, mpalmer at seattlemortgage.com. Or pick up the phone, 281-1500, 281-1500, if you don't care to talk on the air. In fact, Javier from Seattle uh, had to keep moving, Mark. He didn't have time to stay on the air. He had a question regarding a second home. He's going to pay off his mm-hmm. primary okay. in the next couple of weeks. If he purchases another home, mm-hmm. is the rate higher and is it expected to go up or down for investment property? Mm, okay. So uh, let's take uh, two answers here for Javier. If, if he's uh, looking at buying a new primary residence uh, and maybe keeping his existing house as a, a true second home or, or an investment or rental type home, uh, no, he's going to get those 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 great rates as an owner occupied. Um, and that right now, like I say, is three and a quarter, 3.3. It's, it's really low for a 30 year fixed. Um, if he does want to buy another home as an investor home, it is slightly higher. He'll be in that three, six, three, eight, just depending on what we open up with on Monday. Uh, but all good. I mean, it's, he's, he's got some options. There's nothing on the horizon, Mark, that shows that interest rates should go up for any reasons that we know of, right. whether it be for, Primary properties or investment properties? Absolutely. There's just nothing out nothing. there. Okay. There's just nothing. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about HARP because people continue to ask about HARP. Yeah. Home Affordable Refinance Program. Is that still in place? And do you do, do consumers have to hit specific guidelines to qualify? For example, mm-hmm. if I'm underwater, do I qualify? If I have missed a payment, do I qualify for the federal HARP program? Mm, perfect. You can be underwater, with, and HARP's going to still service you. Um, there are some uh, restrictions that come up if, let's say, you're way underwater, 200%. Uh, and, th- and those exist. I mean, it's just, just sign of the times. Uh, more than likely, whoever you're making your payments to right now, that's your only source that you're going to be able to use the HARP program on because um, HARP gets very, very complicated very quickly, but in the short analysis is we still have a private sector that has to service these loans, and there's risk involved with collecting those monthly payments. So if you're already collecting the monthly payment, you're 200% LTV. Um, 
call your existing existing lender. If not, I'd love to talk to you. You know, you could you could be upside down 125%, 150%. I would love to talk to you as as would everybody at Seattle Mortgage. Um, but the second part you brought up is that late payment. You've got to have that last 12 months be nice and tidy. You know, you can have that late payment, but it needs to be at least 12 12 months back. If if a person is up against it, Mark, and they they're really thinking about walking away from their loan. Mhm. Throwing the keys away, mm-hmm. uh, you know there there are a variety of options, yeah. and and one of them is a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Right, it's a it's an actual document that they sign, mm-hmm. but it's not very well known. Can you explain that to our listeners? Yeah, yeah, the deed in lieu of foreclosure is a way of saying to the lender, uh, you know what, I am I'm not in the position to continue on with this house for whatever reason. As we open up this show, there's there's so many reasons that are that are happening right now. And the lender then is in a position to be able to collect the keys to the house without all the judicial process and all the expense and all that that overhead for lack of a better word, both emotional and financial, uh, that comes into play. So it's it's I guess, for lack of a better word, the the good way to do it, if you will. If is that a lesser problem to the consumer down the road, or is that still a blemish on the credit? Is it as big a deal as a foreclosure? It is. Yeah. yeah. It, it, here, you, when we go back to plan. This has been our theme. If I was able to to talk to somebody that's making that consideration, I would say, why don't you, if if you can make that payment on your house, go to a short sale. And the reason I say that is a short sale, well, yes, it is. It is not a, a, a perfect solution. But if you keep your payments up on that short sale to the day that it's closed, you only have about a one-year time frame, and you're right back in the market again, able to make a purchase. Because there is a difference. You did make that attempt, as we talked about earlier, You know, people that, that are paying the charge cards and not paying your house. Well, now you're paying your house payment. And yes, the lender didn't get the full amount they were owed, but they didn't have to chase you for payments. That absolutely comes into play. That's part of the plan, and that's that's your best exit strategy these days if you can do it. Mark, because of the economic environment, people are losing jobs. Many of them, uh, it's not their fault. Obviously, people are laid off all the time. Yep. People change jobs all the time. We often we often ask if a person should wait to apply for a loan after they've changed the job if they know a job change is imminent right what should they do oh boy okay how much time have we got <laughs> <laughs> short version if they could if they if they're getting ready to buy the home and the the job change just happens to come up if it's the same line of work and there's any kind of a benefit so maybe it's a better title more more uh, income coming from it uh, closer to home, something like that, go ahead and make the job change. We're, we're going to be okay with that. Um, where it gets a little tricky is if you start making something that's not quite so lateral. You know, Maybe you're um, delivering bread one day and you're selling insurance the next day. Uh, you know I'd buy my house first in that particular scenario. Um, just, just because we are looking for continuity and security and that sudden change you know, at so many levels eh, might be a little tricky at the underwriting level. But, I mean... We're not. I mean, we're we're not talking out of school here. But once a person qualifies and begins making the payments, and they yeah. become timely, yeah. you don't really care what happens down the road. And the reason I no. say that is this: they can go buy the Ferrari. They can go buy the <laughs> Ferrari. People, for example, two working spouses in their early sixties, mm-hmm. they qualify for a loan. Mm-hmm. If one of them wants to retire. Sure. You're not going to come back to them and say, hey, are you guys retired yet? Because they're <laughs> continuing to make the payments, correct? Correct. Explain Absolutely. that in another way to our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Basically, people get to still have a life. They really do. And, you know, you, that scenario comes up quite a bit because we do have situations at the other end as well. People that are in their 20s and jobs are tougher. Well, daycare is tough. And all of a sudden you've got two or maybe you even have three children and you're looking at a fifteen or $1,800 child care bill. It might be less expensive for one of the one of the spouses to stay home than to have both jobs and that large daycare. Bill. Happens all the time. It happens all the time. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's take a short commercial break and come back with Mark Palmer from Seattle Mortgage. We definitely want to hear from you. One eight 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 nine seven three. 
5476. Toll free line open. 1 888 Cairo. Or go to our website. The website's kind of slow this morning. MyNorthwest.com. Click on the icon that says Connect With Show. Most of our listeners are doing that. But for some reason today, they're all out in their garden and not emailing us their questions. MyNorthwest.com. We got room for you. Click on the icon that says Connect With Show. This is Tom Kelly. The show's Real Estate Today. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Real Estate Today. My guest is Mark Palmer. He's with Seattle Mortgage, and we've been talking about tough loans. Mark, Jake and Edmonds wants to know the single best thing he can do to improve his credit. You know what? Use credit. Yeah. So whatever whatever happened that made it so he wasn't able to make his, his credit payments on time, uh, the single best thing he can do is get back on that horse and start making payments timely. Um, start with your charge cards, your car payment, whatever it might happen to be. And there's another thing, too, we haven't talked about much, Tom, alternative credit. So your insurance payments, your dentist, your cell phone bill, make those on time. Pay them on time. And that, that's, that's how you start. We're going to head over to the phone lines right now and speak with Sean, who's been hanging in there. Sean, how you doing? Uh, not too bad. How are you? Good. Well, what can we help you with? Okay, I had a question. As a single buyer, how realistically is it to buy a home, maybe at an income level of $35,000 a year? Well, I'll tell you, it's probably the best time in my lifetime to buy a home. Mark's going to jump on his computer and talk about uh, what you might be able to qualify for and what the types of homes, the home prices you can go out and run around and, and look for. Mark, give Sean a little direction here. He's single dad, wants to qualify for a home. Absolutely. Sean, not knowing all your scenarios, so I'm going to be a little bit generic here, but the real quick one is, is that first and foremost, when we get through, give me a call at the office, 206-281-1500, and I'll break that down. But your question is a good one. You're going to qualify at 35000 potentially for a payment of about 1020 per month. And using an interest rate right now, 3.5%, that's going to give you a mortgage that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about, eh, let's call it $185,000. And you can do that uh, on a USDA loan at zero down. You can do it with FHA with 3.5% down. Um, that means basically you're buying a house somewhere in the 200000 range. So when you say that his, his monthly payment is going to be $1,020, Mark, are you talking about uh, mortgage Principal, interest, taxes, and insurance? The whole works. Okay. That's his, his whole house payment. So does that help a little bit there, Sean? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's good information. Fantastic. Thanks for calling. Okay. Thanks for taking the time, Sean. You know, a lot of people, they need to ask the question that Sean asked because they don't take the time to do the research. Sean makes thirty-five grand a year. A lot of people don't think that they can qualify for a home. There are a lot of homes under 200000 in King County, Snohomish County, Sean can go out and start looking for one right now. Right now. Let's say Sean buys a home, Mark, yeah. and then he's transferred out of area, sure. and then he's got to rent the thing for 6 to 12 months. Yeah. Um, as long as the payments are made, what does the lender want to know? Yeah, yeah. And so let's, let's go uh, kind of the fast answer here is, is that the lender really wants you to live in your house as its primary residence for at least 12 months. But- you just used a key word. Sean is transferred out. He, he's, maybe he's got to go to Spokane. Right. This, is, this is to keep those payments coming in on time. He's going to be fine. He's, he's able to, to show that he, with all good intentions, bought this house to live in it, but then his employer moved him without his knowledge. He's still going to be okay, and he doesn't lose his interest rate. There's a myth out there that, oh, oh I moved out of my house, and now my interest rate's going to change. Not true. You're going to get to keep your interest rate. If he has people renting his place— he keeps his interest rate, and let's say he he stays in Spokane with the new job for a long time. Right. And one day he wants to refinance the home that his tenants are in. Yeah. How much rental income counts um, when his p tenants pay him regarding his ability to finance a home? Oh, How, great question. What, what, the, what counts as far as month-to-month -month rent? So the so – whether it's month to month or whether it's actually a, a lease of some term, you know, six or 12 months, um, we have another factor that comes in, which is how much equity does he have in the home? 
So if he's got, give or take, 30% equity in the home, then it's all going to count. If he doesn't, potentially none of it's going to count. So it's just going to be a matter of, of, of those combinations of those payments coming in and the equity. Okay, let's head back over to the phone lines right now and speak with uh, Bruce in Silverdale, beautiful Kitsap County. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. What can we help you with? Well, I got a question. I've got uh, two rental properties, one back east, one here. And right now, the one here I refinanced a couple of years ago, got uh, 5.1 APR. The one back east is 7%. I was re- thinking of refinancing both of them. And since I don't live in them, I'm wondering what my chances of refinancing are. Spectacular. And with those rates, absolutely needs to be done. Um, and you, this is even one of those situations where, depending on what your equity is, you may be able to end up with one of them free and clear by moving some of those equities around. Again, I don't know the details, and I'd be happy to talk to you on Monday about this. Again, yeah, that number. I put equity in both of them. I bought them okay. long enough ago that um, I'm good on both of them. Okay. But I'm also retired, so I don't have uh, I have a pension income, but uh, I'm just taking it easy and not working. So. Well, Bruce, the key word was uh, you have income, and, and we're not going to be caring whether it's pension or not. And he's got equity because yep. he's been in there a long time, and you just mentioned, Mark, that because yep. the payments are coming in from the tenants and he's got equity, they're going to count. They're going to count, yep. Oh, okay, great. Hey, yep. Bruce, give uh, Mark a holler during the week, uh, 281-1500, 281-1500. Our time is really short, but I really appreciate your yeah, call. Thanks, Very Bruce. timely. Um, I also wanted to mention, Mark, that um, Bruce asked a great question. He he owns a property out of the area. Yeah. Can you refinance that for him? He's probably going to have to refinance with a lender in the area which the house is located. Yeah, and usually that is the very best way to go is to find somebody local. The appraisal issues these days, you want local. Okay. So that's what I'd suggest. Well, our time has just flown by. I really appreciate our callers. If we did not get to you, we will definitely will have room for you next time here on Real Estate Today. I want to thank my producer and director, Kevin Mendelson, who keeps me in line every week right here at 97.3 Cairo FM. And Mark Palmer and all the folks at Seattle Mortgage who are kind enough to be here and add their expertise on Real Estate Today. We appreciate their input. Get a hold of Mark during the week, 281-1500. Mark Palmer from Seattle Mortgage, 281-1500. Next week, we're going to have the Seahawks. We're going to be preempted. We won't be here, but we will be back in two weeks right here on Real Estate Today, where if we don't have the answer, we try and find somebody who does. See you next time.